The Houston at the BCS bid out of the American Conference. Very unHouston like weather today down in the state of Texas. Rain has been falling the last couple of ball games. The field was muddy and wet. It might get torn up today here at BBVA Compass Stadium. 48 degrees, a couple of minutes shy of kickoff. 60% chance of rain, and guess what? It's already raining here before kickoff in Houston. It's a huge game for these two teams. Both are battling for better bowl games. And again, as we mentioned, Cincinnati, who does not play UCF in the final three weeks of the season, still has an outside shot at the automatic bid out of the American for the BCS. A look at Tony Levine in his second season as the head coach of Houston. Five and seven a year ago, a great turnaround this season for the Cougars who will be on their way to a bowl game. Levine, a former assistant under Kevin Sumlin. And Tommy Tuberville in his first season as the head coach of the Bearcats said to some of the media today before the ball game, this field is awful, very simply put. We'll see if that changes the game plan for these two teams. Adam Amin alongside UMass Hall of Famer Rini and Golia. Do you see the game plan changing because of the weather today for two teams that like to sling it? Yeah, absolutely. Two offenses that like to throw the ball around. This field is... Won the toss, deferred to the second half, so the Cougars will receive. It's Miliano kicking away. And it will be Payne, the junior from Houston, taking it out from the 10-yard line. Out across the 25, Damian Payne. Former linebacker converted to wide receiver on the return. And Houston has the football to start the day with John O'Corn running the show. The true freshman quarterback, number 38 pocket passer in our ESPN recruiting rankings a season ago. Maybe having the best season of any true freshman quarterback. He leads all true freshmen with 23 touchdown passes. He's a very confident thrower of the football. He's gained confidence with every start this season. Great young quarterback just celebrated his 19th birthday yesterday. He has first and 10 from the 26 yard line and one of the two backs that gets the brunt of the carries, it's Kenneth Farrell, the sophomore from Hearst, Texas, running it for a yard. Now O'Corn leads all true freshman quarterbacks in efficiency as well, facing a Cincinnati defense, which is eighth in FBS in total defense. On second down, a give to Farrell, straight running between the tackles, and he pounds his way for a first down. Out to the 37-yard line, Zach Edwards, the safety, finally dragged him down after a 10-yard run. Yeah, and Farrell's the bigger of the two running backs, 5'11", 215 pounds. Look at the offensive line. Good push on a bigger Cincinnati defensive front. Good job by Farrell to get his shoulder square and pick up that first down. Well, Korn will split out wide before he tosses it away. He can bootleg it out a little bit intended for Deontay Greenberry who suffered a head injury against Louisville last week he was tested all week mandatory concussion testing it was never diagnosed as a concussion but he's the leading receiver in the American and top 15 in FBS this year with over a thousand yards receiving second and ten against the four-man front they set up the tunnel screen and it's dropped by Ayers It'll bring up third and ten. Again, the ball may get slick over the course of the day today. The rain is coming down into mist right now. Yeah, and it's cold. It just looks like the receiver tried to run with the ball. And you see it kind of float out of O'Corn's hand, uh, hand there a little bit. And as you said, cold weather can't get a good spiral on the ball sometimes. That's what happened there to O'Corn, no doubt. Split Farrow out. Empty set for O'Corn. Cincinnati likes to mix things up defensively. They rush five. Over the middle for Greenberry and a first down. Dragged down inside the Cincinnati 40. 24-yard pass play to the top receiver in the American. And you see Greenberry right on the inside of the slot. Just a quick release slant pattern. Nice throw by O'Corn for the first down. Another throw over the middle, and it's incomplete. Took a shot that time, Greenberry. O'Corn. Incomplete on the pass with Zach Edwards on the coverage, the outstanding true freshman. You see the little play action. I like the roll there by O'Corn. They're looking to roll him out a little bit. Throw is a little behind to the receiver there. But look for O'Corn to roll. He throws the ball very well and effective rolling out of the pocket. Spencer on the intended target. The second leading receiver for the Cougars this year. Second and ten. O'Corn, plenty of time, throws off his back foot. He had a man in the area in Ayers with pressure in his face. 
Cincinnati second in the American Conference in sacks this year. Houston does have a very experienced offensive line, which has done a pretty decent job of protecting O'Corn for the most part. Continuing to go with this no huddle look. Third and ten. Just a four-man rush against O'Corn who steps up. And it's caught for a first down at the 25-yard line. Greg Ward, who is the backup quarterback, very athletic player. Tony Levine says maybe the most athletic player on the team, lining up as a receiver. And the thing I like what Ward did here, got to the first down markers, knew where he needed to get on the field. O'Corn looked like he was going to run it and stopped at the line of scrimmage and threw a strike to Ward for the first down. There's an injured Bearcat on the field. Aaron Chenault. Senior from Cincinnati, one of the safeties in a very good secondary for the Bearcats. We'll step aside with Chenault on the deck for the Bearcats. Opening drive of the game, the Cougars driving. Starting safety for the Bearcats, Aaron Chenault getting tended to. This is why this is what happened on the previous play. Well, you're going to see Chenault right here, number 25. Watch his neck kind of get stretched back there. Head up. I like how he has his head up, but kind of like that stinger as he comes in there to try to knock the ball out. Looks like he walked off on his own power. They're maybe looking at him in the locker room. Hopefully he's okay, but definitely saw that neck get stretched back there. Now the true freshman, Mike Tyson, takes his spot at safety. First and 10 for Houston on the opening drive of the game, and it's Farrow ducking forward. Works his way to the 22-yard line, about three yards on the play. Now, Houston has lost its last two ball games against two very good teams, mind you. But this is an offense that scored in each of its first 32 quarters. First eight games, in their last two games, they've been shut out in five of the eight quarters by UCF and Louisville. Another spread look, pressure coming in. O'Corn gets rid of it quickly, and it's another first down for the Cougars. Deontay Greenberry working hard for eight yards on the pass play, taken down by Tyson, the replacement out there for Chanel. And Greenberry's a, a bigger receiver as well, Adam. Six foot uh, three, 200 pounds. I like that little sit route there, and he powers through to get that first down. From the 14. A little read play there, and it's given up by the Cougars. A rare turnover by Houston. Farrow and O'Corn had trouble on the exchange, and it's picked up by Cincinnati's Greg Blair. Just the 12th turnover this season by the Houston Cougars, who lead the nation in turnover margin. Little indecision between Farrow and O'Corn leads to a giveaway. The Bearcats have it on the other side. Senior from Pittsburgh, Greg Blair, is ranked in the top 80 on Mel Kuyper's big board as a potential NFL draft prospect, picking up a fumble and a rare miscue by the Houston Cougars, who are now plus 21 in turnover margin, number one in the nation, just their 12th turnover of the season, a rarity to see Houston give up the football, something that they've improved on from a year ago. Yeah, on the zone read, it is imperative for the quarterback, O'Corn. You either give it to that running back, make sure he feels it in the pocket and secure it, or you pull it out and, re and read it, run it around to the outside. That time, bad exchange caused the fumble. Blair was able to pick it up. And Brendan Case, 72.6% completion rate, is second in the nation behind Johnny Manziel. First and 10, and a screen thrown out to Shaq Washington, and it's read well by the Houston Cougar defense. Run down by Steve Taylor, redshirt freshman from Cedar Hill, and a loss of six yards back inside the 20 to the 17. Yeah, really nice job by 41, Steve Taylor. It's just going to be an outside screen and the receiver. Watch Taylor get underneath the block, beat the blocker, crosses his face to make that tackle. Well done. Second and 16, and here is Ralph David Abernathy, who has really been in a funk as of late running the football. I'm going to try to get him a few more touches out on the perimeter. Derek Matthews is there on the stop after a short pickup. It'll be third and long for the Bearcats, who are one of the best teams in the nation on third down. 52% conversion rate on third down is top 10 of the country. 
The Bearcats empty it out with Brendan Kay, their outstanding 60 year senior quarterback. Cougars rush just four. A high throw, and it's hauled in by Washington right at the sticks. Depends on the spot, and based on where the line judge is, it should be enough for a first down. And it will be. Cincinnati converts on third and long. Yeah, nice catch once again. Gets right to the spot. Looks like he got a favorable spot, but they're going quick tempo here. And as you said, Adam, they're giving him the first down. K off the fake to Abernathy. Tough throw on the run and a tumbling catch by Anthony McClung, the senior from Indianapolis. About as sure-handed of a receiver as Cincinnati has in their deep core of wide, re and, wide receivers. And you see Kay just rolling out to the right. Nice route by McClung, just a, a, an over route. Low and away where only his receiver can go down and catch it. First the 10 from the 45. K steps up, confident throw, and another first down into Houston territory. This time it's Chris Moore, the sophomore, for 18 yards. We said it, Brendan Kay, about as accurate of a quarterback as there is in the country. Yeah, just a little play action. Look at him sit in the pocket. Receiver runs a skinny post pattern, comes back on a curl route, and boy, they are in sync right now, the Cincinnati offense. Kay's three for three passing. Another five receiver look, a five man rush for Houston. Open man in the flat, it's Washington, and he's got the first down. Dragged down by Thomas Bates at the 22 yard line. 15 yards there for Cincinnati moving the football well. Yeah, and that time Cincinnati put a little pressure, sent a blitz. You see the crossing route to the outside, the receiver, Washington wide open, good quick release by Kay to get him the ball to pick up another first down. They go wildcat here, Jordan Llewellyn. Trying to run a little bit of different stuff here. Max Morrison gets blown up by Eric Braswell for a loss of four yards. Yeah, and you can't have any uh, penetration. Excuse me, you see Braswell gets upfield, beats the offensive lineman across his face and makes that tackle for a loss. Uh, a much needed TFL there for Houston. Last week against Rutgers, Cincinnati ran a handful of trick plays. Not to say that that is a trick play or anything like that, but Brendan Kay was able to sling it too, coming off a career high 405 passing yards. Late blitz comes in. That gets picked up, and Abernathy makes the catch. At the 24 yard line, it'll be third and long, and Ephraim Oliphant, second in the American Conference in total tackles, is there for the stop. Yeah, and good job by Oliphant. That's exactly what you want to do, especially with a shifty back like Abernathy. Boy, when he catches that ball, come up and make a sure tackle. That's exactly what he did. Oliphant sprinting off the field, an extra defensive back out there for the Cougars, and an empty set for the Bearcats. Only two at their hand down for Houston. They rush just four. Kay's well protected, throwing one, incomplete. Derek Matthews broke it up, intended for Shaq Washington, Cincinnati's leading receiver. Fourth down. And you can see here across the board, everyone's covered for Cincinnati. Very good, two deep zone there by Houston, and as they converge on that pass to Washington, he was surrounded by three defenders. Great coverage there by the Houston secondary. Tony Miliano is just 4 of 10 on field goals. He was 74% his first two seasons. He's been a little bit better in practice, and he's been better since Brendan Kay has taken over as his holder. This is a 41-yard try. 4 of 11 on the season. Hard not to wonder if the footing and the torn-up turf has anything to do with that missed field goal, but Miliano's been struggling. Cincinnati gets the ball on a takeaway, drives down the field, but can't convert. Both teams empty on their first possession. I don't think they're used to this type of weather. It was 46 degrees at kickoff today here in Houston, but that's nothing compared to what it's going to be in Stillwater tonight. Cold and chilly as number four Baylor and number 10 Oklahoma State get set to square off. 8 Eastern on ABC, Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. Baylor has not won in Stillwater since 1939. Huge game with the top spot of the Big 12 on the line tonight. This weather's going to be balmy compared to how it's going to be there tonight. Houston goes back to work, empty on its first drive. And it's Ryan Jackson getting the carry as he works his way out 
to the 29 yard line Jordan step on the tackle Jackson is the team's leading rusher but he and Farrow have bounced back and forth to different types of backs. Second and five O'Corn steps right into pressure and gets hammered down by Nick Temple. The outside linebacker the junior from Indianapolis. And you're going to see Temple step up once again beats the block of the offensive lineman Zach Johnson to meet O'Corn in the backfield. Third and long for O'Corn twin stacked on each side. Late blitz off the edge a five man front. And it was Temple who was the late man who came in and grabbed Jackson by his ankles and brought him down. And Houston goes three and out on its second offensive drive. Yeah, and although both these teams throw the ball, that defensive front for Cincinnati is strong with 91 Dempsey, 94 step in there. They are controlling that line of scrimmage. And when you can do that as interior defensive linemen, it allows your linebackers, it frees them up to get free runs at the backs and quarterbacks. That's exactly what that Cincinnati defensive front seven is doing or did in that possession there. Here is Richie Leone, one of the best punters in the nation. That one's going to hit the deck, and it hit a Bearcat. Almost ended up being a loose ball, but it was recovered by Mason Antu. So Cincinnati goes back to work on offense under first-year head coach Tommy Tuberville. And the last few head coaches have all used Cincinnati as a launch pad job. Mark D'Antonio went to Michigan State. Brian Kelly went to Notre Dame. And then most recently, Butch Jones on his way to Tennessee. The difference is with Tommy Tuberville, now in his 18th yeah. season as a head coach, this isn't a launch pad job for him. His wife is about from, is from about 30 miles west of Cincinnati in Indiana. It's a great fit for him. He may not be looking to move from Cincinnati. This is a very good job I, I, I for him. I don't think he is. A lot of people were surprised when he came to Cincinnati, but boy, look at his first year. It's working out quite nicely. Brendan Kay is seven of eight to start the day. He's eight of nine. Wide open man. Anthony McClung with his second catch of the day, and he's all the way to the 21-yard line, a 34-yard pass play. Boy, and McClung just in the slot. He's going to get lost down that left sideline. No one picks him up for Houston, and good job by Kay just to get McClung the ball, and down the sideline he goes. Nice pickup for the Bearcats. Brendan Kay, second most accurate passer in the country behind Johnny Manziel, has been dynamite so far. Off play action. Loads up a little out route on the outside for Mikhail McKay. That was out of his reach incomplete. McKay had three catches a week ago against Rutgers in that blowout win. All three were for touchdowns. And that time McKay ran a post corner and it's the first time today I saw that the field actually caused an issue there. He was slow on that route really kind of ginger didn't want to slip doing that post corner route. To give to Abernathy in the field plays a role right there he just slipped down to the deck and lost a couple of yards and it brings up third down yeah and the side of the field they're playing on now much worse than the other side and it's starting to get chewed up as we're about halfway through this first corner just a little counter play and you see Abernathy trying to plant that right foot and down he goes those are the issues you'll have especially on this end of the field Abernathy lines up in the slot you'll see that a lot from him today especially when K goes empty five wide Only two with their hand down for the Cougars. Five man rush. K steps up. He needs the 11. He's got the first down and he puts his shoulder down inside the 10. First and goal for Cincinnati. McDonald finally brought him down. 16 yard run for Brendan K, the longest of his season. Yeah, great recognition by K. Look at this hole right here. He's going to see it. He's going to take off. Exactly what you want to do as a cornerback. You had. Man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. The linebackers wide and out. K recognized that. You saw the hole there. He steps up and picks up the first down. K will throw again. Flushed out. Looking to the end zone. Fires an incomplete. He's looking for Chris Moore. That'll bring up second and goal. Good coverage downfield by William Jackson and the Houston secondary. It's a very good secondary, and you see the strip there by Jackson. Good job, gets there, perfect timing, and I love how he rakes that right hand down 
to make sure the receiver cannot come up with that catch. It's a very skilled secondary by Houston. They'll do a lot of man-to-man -man coverage underneath, and that, that it's risky when you play a good team like Cincinnati, but when you have confidence in your secondary, you do it. Jordan Llewellyn in the Wildcat. He'll keep it, pounds his way up the middle for a few yards. That'll bring up third and goal. McDonald on the tackle. Now both Llewellyn and Brendan Kay outweigh eight of yeah. the 11 Houston defensive starters. Well, I love Llewellyn. They list him at 240. You know, he's to me, he's about 250, 260. I mean, he, he really pounds in there, but he can throw the ball as well. But boy, it's like a, a big fullback that can also play quarterback. We'll see what they do here with Llewellyn. He's got three rushing touchdowns, but he's seven of nine passing two. Third and goal. Another read. It's Llewellyn up the middle. And that front line of the Cougars is able to come up big. Farley led the charge up the middle, and it brings up fourth and goal. And again, it's just Will down there. Who can win the line of scrimmage? That time, Houston got off. Got the Cincinnati offensive line back on their heels, and they were able to get to Lou Allen to make that tackle short of the end zone. And they're going to go for it on fourth and goal. Here is Williams up the middle, and he is stopped shy of the goal line. The Cougar defense with a huge goal line stand. Jose Williams, one of the top rushers in the American, gets stuffed, and we remain scoreless in the first quarter. Both teams with two touches on offense. Neither team is able to put up a point in the first four drives of the ball game. Later on today, Indiana has a chance to get bowl eligible, but if they're going to do it, they've got to go through the number three Ohio State Buckeyes with the nation's longest win streak. Then number five, Oregon, taking on Arizona. You could see maybe Ohio State, Oregon in the Rose Bowl this season. Coming your way on ABC or ESPN2 at 3.30 Eastern. Now Tony Levine's team has a long field in front of them, but his defense just came up with a huge goal line stand to stop the Bearcats at the one-yard line. Out of the pistol, they give to Farrow. He's able to get some cushion and pound his way out across the five. Temple tumbled him down, but it brings up second down. And exactly what you want to do when your back's to the goal line, get a running back. You don't pitter-patter there. You get that handoff, get those shoulders square, and get some breathing room. Five yards for Farrow. They go back to him up tempo. He gets smacked right in the middle of the line by Solomon Tentman. This is the ground game this year for the Cougars which averages 151 per game. That's fourth in the American. Both Jackson and Farrow have split the duties. Jackson, you can't call him a scat back really because yeah. he's well-sized. Farrow's more of the downhill guy, though. Yeah, Farrow's just a little bigger of a body, exactly. Similar type runners, but as you said, Farrow a little bit bigger than Jackson. O'Korn will empty it out on third and three. Just a four-man Bearcat rush. Steps up, fires it early. Looking for DeMarcus Ayers. And Cincinnati comes up with a stop and should probably expect good field position coming up here. Yeah, and again, good pressure by that Cincinnati defensive front, forcing O'Corn out of the pocket and the incomplete pass. And as you said, good field position coming up here for Cincinnati if they can field this punt. Richie Leone, Tony Levine says, is the best punter in the country. He'll be an NFL punter. Out of Roswell, Georgia, but he's going to have to be careful here, punting out of the back of the end zone. Rush gets picked up, and a good punt. Fair catch is signaled by McClung. We'll start this drive at the plus 47-yard line. 39-yard punt there for Leone, and here's how he got to this point. A rare fumble on the opening drive of the game. Uh, Rare turnover from the Houston offense. Cincinnati couldn't take advantage, though. They got stopped on third down and a long field goal missed by Miliano. Then Cincinnati's second drive, they worked all the way down to the one. But a goal line stand by the Houston Cougars. They come up with the stop. 
Tony Levine's team punts it away, and now Cincinnati's got the ball in plus position. Brendan Kay off to a very solid start in this ballgame. 7 of 10 for 88 yards, one of the most efficient and accurate passers in the country. He gives to Jose Williams. Patient running across the 45 to the 44. He picks up three yards before Braswell runs him down. And Jose Williams, eighth in the American Conference in rushing yards this season. He's a smaller back. They have Tion Green, who's a bit of a bigger back at 220 pounds. Haven't seen him yet. And, of course, Ralph David Abernathy, who's been a mainstay the last couple of years in the backfield, who's been struggling as of late. On second and seven. Kay sets up the tunnel screen for Washington, and the Cougars rally to the football. A loss of a yard on the play. Braswell rallies to it, and he gets some help from Joey Embu, the junior from Richmond, Texas, who had just one scholarship offer. It came from the Cougars, and he's probably going to end up in the NFL in a couple of years. Yeah, a big body is Embu, as you said, 310 pounds. Actually lost a lot of weight, got himself in really good condition. And boy, feast or famine on those tunnel screens. Good job by Embu there to make that play. Just the four-man rush on third down. K finds Washington, who reaches for the sticks. He got dragged down by Trayvon Stewart, the outstanding sophomore safety, but based on that spot, it looks to be a little bit short. And great job by Shaq Washington, knowing where those sticks are, trying to, trying to reach that ball out. I think he's going to be short, but take a look at it right here. They're going to run a little crossing route. He just sits down at the marker. He's a little short, makes the catch, knows where he needs to go. Look at him reach that ball out. Looks like he may be a little short from this spot, but they're going to measure it. But good awareness, on-field awareness of knowing where you are and where that first down marker is. Boy, close. Tracy Jones is our lead official today, and it'll be fourth and short. Bearcats, last time they went for it on fourth down, it was on the goal line. They got stuffed. The Bearcats have won five consecutive games ever since a loss to USF. They can still get the 10 wins this season. They can still possibly get the automatic bid to the BCS out of the American Conference. However, UCF would have to lose one of its final two games, and Cincinnati would have to win out, and Cincinnati would have to finish ahead of UCF in the BCS standings. Yeah, because in that scenario, they would be co-champions for the American. If you have co-champions, the, the, the team with the higher BCS ranking would get that automatic BCS spot. We saw David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator for the Cougars, hoping his team can come up with a stop again, but Kay sneaks it up the middle for a couple of yards to the 35 yard line and moves the sticks. Cincinnati able to convert again. K six foot four, 228 pounds. That's something that was a concern for David Gibbs in his first season as the DC for the Cougars. This is a smaller undersized Houston defense and he's afraid that these last couple of games they might run out of juice. Yeah, and if you're Cincinnati who hasn't had a great running game this season, this might be a game where you start getting your hockeys going forward and try to establish it. K. Off play action, being pressured and brought down back near midfield. Jeremiah Farley stuck with Kay and brought him down for a loss of 14 yards. 24th sack of the season for the Cougar defense, third in the American. And that's a bad sack. You're going to see Farley right in here. Actually right there. Watch him fight through the block and just keep going. Keep fighting, and that's a horrible sack by Kay because you have time as the defensive lineman Farley does a nice job to keep fighting. Boy, you don't want to take that big of a loss, but ju nice job by Kay. Second and a quarter of the field for Cincinnati to start the second quarter on the other side of this break. How about this? Two of the more higher-powered offenses in the American Conference have been stymied so far in rough conditions in Houston in a big American Conference game. Both offenses, top 35 in FBS in points per game. Neither was able to put up a point in the opening quarter of play. And it's second and nearly a quarter of the field for the Bearcats to start quarter two in Houston. And yes, this is Houston. Yeah. We're not in Cincinnati, regardless of what you may think based off weather alone and all the ponchos you see. Very 
unHouston like weather today. Brendan Kay again empties it out. Just a three man rush, so Houston drops eight back in coverage. So Kay's got to go underneath, and he finds Washington at the 40 for nine yards. Now, ever since the USF game, that was a game that Cincinnati lost since that second half of the game. You see what Cincinnati has done in the second quarter offensively. A lot of that has to do with them going to almost exclusively the spread since that game. Kay down the field and caught in stride. Chris Moore all the way home. 40-yard touchdown strike. Out of the spread for Cincinnati. An explosive play, something they did a lot of last week against Rutgers. You're going to see him right here on the outside. Just an inside move as he beats the corner. No safety help whatsoever as he goes by the defensive back, Zach McMillan and Thomas Bates, 13. Nice throw by Kay for the touchdown. Touchdown pass number 21 for Brendan Kay in his senior campaign. Miliano adds the extra points. They take advantage of the excellent field position despite taking a 14-yard sack. They can work out of the spread pretty well, and any one of his receivers can strike. The eighth touchdown of the year to lead the Bearcats for more this season. Last week, Cincinnati had 10 plays of 20 or more yards against Rutgers in that 52-point outburst. Two plays already today of 20-plus yards for the Bearcats, including a touchdown a moment ago to Chris Moore. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely torched Rutgers last week. Rutgers sent a lot of blitzes at Cincinnati. Cincinnati picked up those blitzes, were able to, to beat them with a lot of big plays. So far, Houston hasn't set that many blitzes at them, but right now they're getting receivers open nonetheless. Ayers leads the American in kick return average. We'll see if they go after him or go after Payne. Miliano on the attack. And they'll kick it towards Payne. From the seven. Payne has a seam and he got tripped up. Nice job by Anthony King to get a piece of him and bring him down. Here the 24 yard line. Yeah. As we take a look at it, look at the safety. Zach McMillan right here. Look how he turns his hips to the inside. Right here, the receiver Moore is on the outside. The corner, Bates thinks he's gonna have help, but boy, when you turn your hips to the inside like McMillan does, you cannot get back to the ball, and right there is how you beat it. And you that, can't do that with a 60 year quarterback in Brendan K. Correct, because you know you look that safety off, which is gonna get McMillan to turn his hips to the inside, exactly what K wanted him to do, and there's no way the safety can get back and help out the corner on that play. John O'Connor. Cincinnati territory, it's Daniel Spencer down to the 46 yard line. Quick strike from the true freshman O'Corn. And you like it, just a quick inside route by Spencer. Good throw in rhythm by O'Corn and a big pickup for Houston. Back of an answer to get into Bearcat territory after the touchdown. This is a give to Ryan Jackson trying to work his way up the middle for about a yard. He's up second and nine. Greg Blair is on his way to the NFL. Mel Kuyper has him in the top 80 on his current draft rankings. A junior college transfer out of Pennsylvania, originally from Pittsburgh, leads the team in tackles. Blitz coming in. That got picked up, and Greenberry was the intended target, and Blair was the man on the coverage right on his hip. He also had some safety help from Edwards, but Greenberry has more than 70 catches this season. The next closest is about 39 yeah. for Houston. And going back to Blair, six foot two, 250 pound middle linebacker that's athletic and can run. No doubt he's gonna be a standout on Sundays next year. O'Corn, just a three man rush. Eight back in coverage, looking for a window in Spencer and incomplete. Blair was back there along with Aaron Chenault. The safety, and it's fourth down. Boy, and you're gonna see the coverage. The, the defensive back's actually gonna have his back turned to Spencer right there. Gets there late, but is able to knock it down. Chenault and Witte both on the coverage for the Bearcats. Now Leone 
who was handling all of the kicking duties up until the last three ball games. He was kicking field goals, he was doing kickoffs and punting. He's no longer hanging, handling the field goal and place kicking duties. There's an outstanding punter. And Anthony McClung will have to bail out and excellent coverage by the Cougars. Perfectly placed 43 yard punt by Leone down by Alex Tillman in a long field in front of the Bearcats next. Cincinnati on top with the football early second quarter here in Houston and you can get close to all the action wherever you are with the new Sports Center app. Blazing fast scores, the hottest news and highlights, analysis, and access to your favorite Sports Center talent 24-7 via Twitter. You can also download the new Sports Center app by calling Star Star SC from your phone. Brennan Kay, the second most accurate passer behind Johnny Manziel in the country, 11 of 14 to start the day, but he's at his own one yard line. Williams is the back. They're going to pass out of the end zone and take a shot downfield. Incomplete overthrown for Mikhail McKay. He had Thomas Bates on the coverage, and they kind of incidentally collided with each other, and it brings up second down. Yeah, and you saw McKay look at the field judge looking for a call, but I I'm with you, Adam. Both of these guys kind of jockeying for position. Incidental contact as they go over. No call. I think it's a good no call by the field judge. Definitely McKay wanted it there. Not going to get it. How about Eddie Grant, first-year offensive coordinator, longtime assistant under Tommy Tuberville, calling for a pass out of the end zone and doing it again. Roll in the pocket, a line drive, it's picked off. Adrian McDonald with the interception, the 19th of the year for the Cougars to lead the nation. And Houston's got excellent field position. And back to plus 22 for turnover margin for Houston again. Thrown it for the second time in a row on the goal line as K rolls out. And a great job by McDonald. Just playing free safety there. Coming underneath, cutting across to make that interception to set Houston up in great position. The fourth pick of the season for the sophomore from Oklahoma. And Houston's got the football at Cincinnati's 20-yard line with a chance to tie the game early in the second. John O'Corn just 4 of 11 passing so far today, plus that... Miscue on the exchange on the opening drive with his running back that gave Cincinnati the football. Play clock is at two on the board here. Now it's down to zero, and you hear the whistle coming in. Delay of the game, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. I'm not sure if John O'Corn realized that I, the play clock was coming down. I don't think late. anyone did, but the Cincinnati bench as they ran down and alerted the officials. Boy, a bad penalty coming off a change of possession like that after an interception. Boy, you think you'd be ready to go getting on the field. Still good field position, but now first and 15. And O'Corn will look to throw. He had an open man downfield. He gets flung down. And he ended up shoveling it away. Brad Hera, the junior defensive end, grabbed O'Corn, who ended up tossing it away with an intended target there. It's an incomplete pass. Well, you're right. He had a receiver right down the middle. Ayers, who was wide open. Watch Ayers on the post release. No safety in the middle. Wide open. But O'Corn could not set his feet to throw to call because Hera got there in a split second. Second and long. And again, he empties it out. Five-man rush. O'Corn throws downfield for one-on-one -on -one coverage. And it's incomplete. No penalty flag thrown as Ayers was guarded by Howard Wilder. And just mano y mano there. Wilder running step for step with Ayers. Very good coverage. Yeah, great job not interfering with the receiver. Wilder step for step. Exactly what you want to do when you're on an island there as a cornerback. Third and 15. Another empty set. And five on the line for the Bearcats. But only three of them come. They set up the tunnel screen and not a lot of room for Spencer to find. Rallying to the football, Devin Drain. They dropped eight back in coverage and then they just rallied to the ball. Yeah, and these tunnel screens are feast or famine. They either go for good or not. And this last couple have been for not. As you see the defenders 
of the Bearcats. Get underneath the blockers. When you can get underneath the blockers, cross their face, so to speak, boy, you're in line to make a tackle. Exactly what they did there. And how about this? On fourth and 17, they're going for it. It would be about a 45-yard field goal or so for the sophomore Kyle Buller. And they're going to go for it with eight back in coverage, Cincinnati. O'Corn downfield for Greenberry, and it's broken up incomplete. Aaron Chenault comes flying in, and it's a turnover on downs. Well, both teams have not been shy to go for it on fourth down today. Well, and a good job by Chenault not to catch this, because you don't want to pick it off on fourth down, down at your five-yard line. Gets a hand on it, knocks it down, and they're going to have it back at the line of scrimmage. But exactly what you want to do from that free safety spot, and Aaron Chenault come up, knock it down. <laughs> So Houston gets a huge interception. They have the ball at Cincinnati's 20-yard line and come away with nothing. And now Brendan K back to work with four receivers in the formation. Reed and Jose Williams able to stay on his feet despite that really tough footing out there. Ephraim Olafon finally brings him down at the 33-yard line. A nice balance, good run by Jose Williams. And listen, we talked to Coach Tommy Tuberville this week. He wants to get that running game going a little bit more. And in, in a game like this with these conditions, this is the time to do it with that big offensive line. It, it, it's much bigger than a smaller Houston defense. Hold the water, 49. Hold the water. Abernathy in motion. K pumps to him, now throws down the middle, and it's caught by McClung for a first down. Into Houston territory, down at the 41-yard line. McMillan finally dragged him down, a 24-yard pass play. And you're going to see McClug right here from the inside position. Stops like he's going to run a little hook route, and then just releases down what we call the seam. Good job by Kay. Play action pass and find McClug in that seam route. Empty set. Four-man rush. Out route for McClug. And you saw... Trayvon Stewart try to strip the ball away. Nice job by McClung to hold on to it after an eight-yard gain to the 34. Yeah, and you better be ready if you're a Cincinnati receiver ball care because this Houston defense, that's what they practice to do, strip the ball. We had a good look at Stewart there trying to strip McClung. Second and two. Another read, and Williams breaks through that initial surge and gets the first down to the 28-yard line. Gain of six on the run. Oliphant was there for the tackle. Now, not, not only does Houston lead the country in interceptions, but they're second in the nation in fumble recoveries. So they do it on in both ways. They're not just picking off yeah. passers. They're tough on the front and line. And they too. challenge each other at practice to get fumbles, to get interceptions, strip the ball. That's exactly what you want out of your defensive unit. Defense, 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 defense. First and 10 at the 27. A read for Williams and a good cut and a big seam. And he runs near the sticks. B.J. Singleton drags Williams down, but a great cut and a big alley open for Williams there. Yeah, watch. It looks like it's going to be a sweet play. And watch the hole develop right here. Look at this. Great cutback by the running back, Jose Williams. Exactly what you do. Plant that foot and go. Quick screen thrown out to McClung, and he has the first down. Got tripped up by Zach McMillan for six yards, but that'll move the chains inside the 15. First and 10 from the 12 for Cincinnati. They've gone a little more tempo, a little more rhythm, and they've looked very good ever since. Yeah, if you're offensive coordinator Eddie Grant, you're happy. You're running the ball, you have short passes, and you're hitting it down the field, really clicking on all cylinders. K is 13 of 18 passing. Another read. This time K keeps it. Inside the five, he is into the end zone, but a penalty marker is down. A flag at the 10. Holding offense, number 78, 10-yard penalty, first down. And that is the sophomore right tackle, Parker Einger. He's a freshman All-American last year. Got called for that holding penalty, so negate Brendan Kay's rushing touchdown. Yeah, Einger, the right tackle. We're going to take a look at it. Number 78 right here. 
That's what he's going to get called for. The referee's looking right down. And the same thing is, if you're a big offensive tackle, if you get that arm extended outside the shoulder pad, which Iger did there, the referee's looking straight lined right at that. Once that arm's extended outside, nine times out of ten, they're going to call holding. First and 20. Back at the 22-yard line. The seventh play of a drive is a Brendan K pass towards the end zone. Incomplete for Max Morrison. The sophomore at six foot one and a reach out to snare it. And nice throw by K. Morrison had a beat on this ball. I thought he was going to come up with it. But good throw by Brendan K. Leading Morrison to the back of the end zone where only he can catch that ball. Morrison's got three touchdown catches. McHale's got seven. Chris Moore has eight now. He has the lone touchdown of the game. Washington's got one. McClung's got five. It's a deep position. Second and 20. Jose Williams up the middle. 21 yard line. Picked up just a yard, and it'll bring up third and long. Cincinnati is three of six on third down. They've moved the ball extremely well. But can they cash in over 200 yards of offense already? Just a four-man rush. Kay has plenty of time. Slings it to the outside, and it's caught by Washington at the eight. It'll still be about six yards shy of the line to gain. But it's a nice pickup. Get some closer. I mean, they were already in field goal range. Now they're in really good field goal range. Move it up there. Give your kicker a better opportunity to put another three on this board to extend this lead to 10 to 0. Miliano missed a 41 yarder earlier today. He's 4 of 11 on the season. He's been better in practice. As he has had his issues so far after a really good season last year. This from 25 yards. And the chip shot is angled in to give Cincinnati a 10 to nothing lead. The Bearcats trying to win their sixth consecutive game and stay in the BCS hunt. They've got a two-score lead on the Cougars. Houston last week only 195 total yards. They've got 92 so far today, but held scoreless thus far, and Cincinnati's on top. 10-0. Celebrating its ninth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3.3 million in scholarship funds. It's cold. It's been rainy for most of the day. The field is wet and muddy and torn up. This is a little bit shocking for Houston yeah. this time of year, but Tony Miliano bangs in a field goal, and it's 10-0 Bearcats. Yeah, and I mean, Houston really, to only be down 10-0 at this point, the way Cincinnati has moved the ball on offense, got to be feeling pretty fortunate. They go down and put a score in here, they're right back in this thing. Well, they switch it up. Ayers comes to the near side of the field, has to grab that football, and does it the 17. He's one of the top kick returners in the country, and Cincinnati's been trying to avoid him. Ayers and Payne switched it up there so that Ayers could get his ball or get his hands on the ball and he works his way out to the 29. So far, both teams have had chances to put more points on the board. But a 10-0 Cincinnati lead and John O'Corn, the true freshman, who just celebrated his 19th birthday yesterday. A little shaky to start. Well, you know, the zone read, you got to make sure you either pull it or give it. He didn't give it. Turnover there. That time he should have thrown the ball. Couldn't get rid of it. And again, here, nowhere to go as he tries to run the ball. Just not been a great day for O'Corn thus far. He's got plenty of time on first down, and he's able to find his open man. Caught by Greg Ward, the backup quarterback, who's one of the most athletic guys on this team. His second catch of the day, that one for 29 yards. And right on cue, O'Corn, flushed out of the pocket, steps up and throws a nice ball to Greg Ward who a lot of people say may be the best athlete on this Houston Cougars team. Had a catch against Louisville last week, two today. 
from plus territory. They go to Jackson. Patient running, but got dragged down from behind. Good play by Marquise Aiken, the senior from Lauderhill, Florida, the transfer from Marshall. And it brings up second down from the 44 yard line. Yeah, just tough running between the tackles against a very stout defensive front of Cincinnati. Cincinnati shows pressure. They bring five. O'Korn stepped up and got dragged down from behind by Silverberry Muhan. Seven and a half sacks to lead this team. He's top five in the American, and he brings up third and long. My, my favorite name, Silverberry <laughs> Muhan, right here. Watch him get up the field from the defensive end spot. They try to pull a guard to block him. He loved to spin back inside for the sack. Exactly what you want to do. Third and long. Safety blitz leaves one on one over the middle, but great coverage on Greenberry by Devin Drain. Greenberry, the top receiver, one of the top receivers in the country, and he's limping off the field right now. And Cincinnati's defense, which has been excellent all season long, comes up with another stop against a very good tandem in O'Corn and Greenberry. Yeah, Greenberry, one of the better receivers in the nation. Nice job by Devin Drain there. Not to pass interfere. You see him with that inside hand. Knock the ball down, doesn't grab him with the outside hand. Great coverage there. Leone to punt it away to Anthony McClung. And he has the signal of fair catch at the five-yard line. An outstanding punt again by Leone. Back-to-back -back great kicks by the future NFL punter. Cincinnati's defense is able to come away with a stop on Deontay Greenberry, one of the top receivers in the nation. A little bit shaken up after that play. Good to see Deontay Greenberry hustling around. He was jogging and running down the sideline, so he seems to be okay. Later on today, great doubleheader on ABC or ESPN2 at 3.30 Eastern. Number three, Ohio State taking on Indiana with the nation's longest win streak under Urban Meyer at 22 straight. Then number five, Oregon. Marcus Mariota back to work in the Pac-12, still in the hunt for the Pac-12 title, taking on Arizona. College football presented by Kate Jewelers and Five Hour Energy. Indiana, Ohio State, and Oregon, Arizona at 3.30 Eastern. Cincinnati up 10-0, back to work. Jose Williams is the deep back behind Brendan Kay from their own five. And there was movement before the play. False start. Half the distance to the goal, first day. It's the right tackle. Parker Einger. It's 10 0 Bearcats, but it feels like they could be up by more. And they really should have been. Here's the touchdown, the nice throw and catch to Chris Moore. But here's a missed field goal that was made early on in this game. They leave three away. And here's first and goal. They don't score. And Houston ends up holding them at the goal line. They throw another interception. So it could be a lot a better lead for Cincinnati. And Kay into a tight window, throws his second pick of the day. This time it's Steve Taylor. And Houston again takes over inside the 20-yard line of Cincinnati. They'll have it at the 10. Uh, hopefully, since he didn't know, we were talking about some of the miscues they had because right on it, they get another one. You see K step in, and boy, nice job by the linebacker, Steve Taylor, to step in front of that ball, beating the receiver to the spot. The receiver, Shaq Washington, could not get there quick enough as Taylor steps in front of him. And boy, Houston is going to be knocking on the door. Feels like Houston has to score here with six and a half to go just to get their offense a little life. They've had chances. Their last interception had them set up at the 20 and they could not come away with points. They've had three big plays today. Other than that, their other 26 plays, they're averaging about a yard per play. First and goal from the 10. It's a give to Farrow. And great push by Cincinnati up front. Charge led by Jordan Stepp. And a loss of two yards on the play. As I talked about it earlier, 94 step, 91 Dempsey, both about 285 pounds, very stout in there. And you see Step get off the block fast from his defensive tackle spot, very strong. And Cincinnati defense as a unit, they run to the ball very well. Second and goal. O'Corn off play action, has one on one, has the touchdown! Deontay Greenberry hauls it in, his 10th touchdown of the season. Houston back in it. 
Yeah, it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Wilder versus Greenberry. Just an inside release slam pattern. Nice throw by O'Korn. Leading Greenberry to the middle of the field. No safety there as he beats the corner. Howard Wilder just like that. Houston's on the scoreboard. And Kyle Bullard has been handling the field goal and place kicking duties the last four games. The sophomore able to bang it through and it's 10-7. The interception from Houston, something they do better than any other team in the country, sets them up at the 10 yard line. They're now plus one on the day in turnover margin. And Steve Taylor comes up with that big pick and a rare two interception game for Kay. And Greenberry, who was shaken up on the last drive, right back on the field and right into the end zone. Deontay Greenberry decommitted from Notre Dame to come to Houston, the first ever five-star recruit for the Houston Cougars. It was a huge get, and Tony Levine was so shocked by the get that they got from Deontay Greenberry. There was a point where he had told the coach who was recruiting him, you're wasting your time. He's not yeah. coming here. He's too highly touted, but Greenberry, an outstanding receiver. He's just a sophomore. He's still got time, but he's going to be an NFL receiver uh, at some point. A true outside threat that can stretch the field and come inside, as we saw on that slant. Six foot three, 200 pounds. Big target, over 70 receptions on the year. And as you said, what an unbelievable get by the Houston Cougars to land DeAndre at Greenberry. Leone gets set to kick away. He's still handling the kickoff duties. 30 of his 62 kickoffs have been touchbacks this year. And this will send Abernathy into the end zone. Out to the 25 come the Bearcats. With under six to go in this second quarter. Greenberry again. We saw him get shaken up a little bit on the previous Houston possession. Getting taped back up. But he was running pretty well on that touchdown pass beating Wilder. Yeah, I mean, if you're Greenberry, boy, you love when you see just a corner one-on-one -on -one with you, man-to-man, -man, no safety in the middle of the field. They will take that all day long. Again, Cincinnati's had chances to be up more. That goal line stand by the Cougars, the missed field goal as well from Cincinnati today, 229 total yards, but they lead by just three. Yeah, when you have a chance to put some distance on a team, put them away a little bit, you got to do it. If not, when they hang around, it's trouble. First and 10 from the 25, and Williams had nowhere to go. A little pep in the step of the Houston front line, led by Matthews. Derek Matthews, the inside linebacker. David Gibbs and Tony Levine said he's about as instinctive as any player they've had in Houston. And remember, Levine's been here six years. He was on staff with Kevin Sumlin, just his second year as the head coach. Five-man rush. That blitz gets picked up, but Kay is flushed out. Tosses towards one on one and overthrown out of bounds. Third down. And, and, and you almost feel it after the last turnover Houston had, the big touchdown. It's, it's changed. You know, the momentum has changed in this game. Houston's playing better on defense. You can feel it in the stadium. And a big third down here for Cincinnati. Doug Meacham and John O'Corn. First year at Houston for both of those two. We're hoping the defense could come up with a stop on third and long. The three of seven on third down. Just a four-man rush. Williams stays in the block. Down the middle and incomplete broken up. McClung was there, hands ready. But Tillman comes in and jars that ball away. Fourth down. Yeah, and Houston was man-to-man -man underneath with safeties on top. As you see the defensive back, Tillman, come to knock it. It looked like McClung was going to hold on to it, but good job by Tillman to come and knock that ball out before McClung can make the reception. John Lloyd, who's second in the American individually in punting average, 44 yards a punt, is on for the first time. Damian Payne ready to return. Forty two yard punt out of bounds at the thirty five but a penalty marker is down back at the thirty two yard line. Doing the kick. 
holding receiving team number 17. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. So this will go back to the 25 yard line. Houston goes back to work after Deontay Greenberry ends up getting a touchdown. But remember on the previous drive, he came limping off the field, seemingly was hobbled, but they taped him up. And then after the interception, setting him up at the 10, quick slant. O'Korn hooks up with Greenberry for the 10th touchdown of the season for the sophomore from Fresno, California. Yeah, nothing a little tape can't fix. You know, we, we do it at home. Usually, you know, we're duct taping stuff here, a little athletic tape. And Greenberry's looking okay, gets back in there, and big touchdown. And you said it, he's a true threat on the outside or the inside. They have shifted him around yeah. in his career between outside to inside, and he can do it all. And that's why he's, he's going to be an NFL prospect, because he can do it all, and he has that big size, that big body. Already three catches. Empty set for O'Korn, and it's a design draw up the middle. Dragged down at the 33-yard line by Greg Blair. An eight-yard run, but a penalty marker down. It actually may have ended up being picked up. There was a flag on the field momentarily, but that got picked up. O'Korn, he has one-on-one -on -one down the sideline, and now a penalty marker will come in. Well, they're going to say it's uncatchable, Adam. The line judge and the field judge, the back judge threw the flag, but the corner definitely grabbed the receiver and pulled him there. Grant we'll Coleman was the cornerback there on that play with Xavier Maxwell running downfield. The officials are going to discuss this. Now, again, if the ball is deemed uncatchable, there may not be a pass interference call. That's probably what the officials are discussing right now. The ball was passed eventually out of bounds. Holding defense, number 13, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. So no pass interference, yeah. but they do get Coleman for holding on the pass. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. You see Coleman grabs him right there. Didn't get a good look at it. Good call by not making a pass interference. That ball was totally not catchable. It was way out of bounds. You're going to see a hold. It was right before as he turned up to get separation. There was a hold. So I think it's a good call by the officials. Give him the five yards, or excuse me, 10 yards in the first down, but wave off that pass interference because that ball was not catchable. Third penalty against Cincinnati. Houston only two penalties for 15 yards. It's been Houston that has struggled more with penalty yardage on the season than Cincinnati has. So fresh set of downs and the ball at the 43-yard line for O'Korn. Give us to Ryan Jackson and maybe a yard with forward progress on the play. Zach Edwards there for the stop along with Jarrell Jordan. And it brings up second and nine. And the one thing you don't want to do as a running back is kind of pitter-patter and dance, especially against a good defensive front. Make one cut, square those shoulders, and go. Cincinnati sixth in the country against the run. Four-man rush. O'Korn will screen it out to Greenberry. Step out of bounds across the 45. Shoved out by Leviticus Payne. About three yards there. Third and six coming up. Greenberry looks good. Suffered that head injury against Louisville early in the game last week. Was targeted a couple of times. He looks good today. Third down. Safety blitz coming in late. That gets picked up. Good block by Jackson, but O'Korn throws it up for grabs and it's incomplete. Devin Drain on the coverage on Greenberry. O'Korn was getting pressured in the backfield. Well, the blitz got picked up, but he still got pressured. Well, you said it, and the blitz is going to come right up the middle, right there. They pick it up, but it forces O'Korn out of the pocket. And then he does something that you should not do, and a lot of young quarterbacks try to do this. Throw it back to the middle of the field, rolling away from that throw. Lucky it was not picked off. So now McClung will return this Leone punt. Leone's had back-to-back -back excellent punts. And another fair catch signaled by McClug. Back at the 14-yard line. 40-yard punts for Leone. And now Cincinnati 
as Brendan Kay, one of the most accurate passers in the country, on a bit of a rough stretch. He's thrown two picks today. Yeah, that one, the safety McDonald undercut him, and there the linebacker Steve Taylor cuts in front of the receiver as well. And if you notice the interceptions from Kay, his back, they've all been back in his end zone. They've all been back at the goal line. I don't know if he's thinking of, you know, trying to get that ball out a little quicker, but boy, when you put your quarterback back to the goal line like that, sometimes a little more pressure than normal. Marine City, Michigan. K back to work out of the gun with Abernathy in the backfield. Off play action. He finds McClunk wide open with a lot of space down the sideline. Tripped up near the 30. Got upended by Adrian McDonald after a 15-yard gain to move the sticks. Yeah, on that one, the corner, William Jackson, just in his back pedal, fell down. There's where this field comes into play. The receiver was wide open as he turns it up. Does McClung for a nice pickup. Jackson, the sophomore junior college transfer. Out of the pistol from the 30-yard line. Blitz gets picked up. K hit as he throws, but he connects with Morrison just shy of midfield. 17 yards there, and you can see Kay a little bit shaken up. He took a shot right at the end of that play. Yeah, good route by Morrison. Kay knew he was going to get hit. Watch him stay in the pocket. He knows it's coming right here. Boy, and he threw a nice pass. Good clean hit on time. Good football play, but boy, give Kay credit taking that hit from number 46, Trevor Harris. the 49. First and 10. It's tough to cut, but Abernathy keeps his feet, and makes it a good gain. Forward progress to the 46-yard line. Five yards there. McDonald was the first man to rally to the football as we approach two minutes to go in this first half. Now you talked about Trevor Harris. Rush defensive end between him, the true freshman Tyus Bowser, and then the sophomore Eric Island. They have all kind of run a very interesting position on that defense and you're seeing it much more common lately right now it's Bowser in the game he's the one that doesn't have his hand down on that line we asked Tony Levine do you run a 3-4 or 4-3 he goes I don't know yeah because we just have <laughs> kind of a hybrid yeah. that that extra position there okay to throw one-on-one -on -one, and the receivers got space it's Washington inside the 10 pushed out near the five he's out of bounds at the three Washington got loose for 43 yards, able to beat Trayvon Stewart, the safety. Yeah, and they're going to run across. Watch this right out there. The safety, Trayvon Stewart, cannot catch up to the receiver, Shaq Washington. Again, like the touchdown earlier, the safety's inside field, cannot turn his hips and get to it. And just like that, a big play, first and goal for the Bearcats. Eight catches for Washington. Now he's got nearly 100 yards. They go back to the Wildcat. It's Lou Allen in the game. First and goal, Lou Allen. Houston comes up with that stop. This is what they did the last time that Cincinnati had first and goal near the five. They were able to come away with a goal line stand. That time, Tommy Mark led the charge. Again, just good penetration by the Houston Cougar defense. Right now, they believe when Jordan Lou Allen comes in a game, He's exclusively going to run the ball, and that's the way they're treating it. If I'm Cincinnati, if I'm Eddie Grant, maybe I leave Lou Allen in there, call up a pass play. I'm a little surprised, I think you were too, when they didn't lean on Kay, who, as you mentioned, we keep mentioning it just because it's so impressive, the company he's with, including Teddy Bridgewater, including Johnny Manziel, including Jameis Winston, in terms of completion percentage. Near 73% on the year, and they didn't let him go to work inside the five well, when they had first and goal. Here's another thing, too. When you have McCalla McKay, a six foot six receiver on the outside, and the tallest defensive back, cornerback for Houston goes five foot ten, five foot eleven. You have such a big mismatch. Boy, where's that that the corner route uh, to a big receiver like that? Let him go up and try to high point the ball. And now Kay is coming back on the field here. Minute 38 to go. David Gibbs, first-year defensive coordinator for Houston. K will throw on second and goal. Fade route, and it's deflected away from Morris uh, from Moore. 
Thomas Bates had the coverage one of the top pass defenders in the American Conference and it brings up third and goal. And that time Morrison the outside receiver came inside Moore went to the outside corner and just very good coverage by Bates on that play. Watch out for Blake Annan as well in this situation they like him in the red zone. Actually they take him off the field it's straight up four receivers. And any one of them can come up with a catch for a score. Third and goal. Blitz is on for Houston. A fade route toss for Moore. And he holds it in. Touchdown. His second of the day. And that time he beat Bates. Boy, what a catch by Chris Moore. Man-to-man -man coverage with Thomas Bates. Back turned to him, doesn't know where the ball is. As Bates turns, he's guessing. Moore knows where the ball is the whole time. Goes up, high points it, exactly what you want to do there. You said guessing. That looked like Bates jumped a little early yeah. that time. Absolutely. Not knowing, kind of turn, hoping he was going to get there. Turned too early. Moore had his slice set on that ball and makes the catch. Villiano adds the extra point and back to a 10-point advantage for the Bearcats. Boy, you see Embu, 92, with pressure on Kay as he throws that fade. Good job by Kay to get it up there. And again, as I said, you see Bates kind of turn early, waving at the ball. Chris Moore has it in his sights the whole time, makes the catch, gets the feed inbounds, and a nice touchdown for Cincinnati to extend this lead to 17-7. To and you talked about Kay with Embu right in the thick of things there on the pass. Kay's been banged up a little bit on yeah. that last drive. He took a couple of tough shots, including that last one from Embu. Well, and you like his toughness. A big kid, six foot four, 230 pounds, but he's not shy in the pocket. He doesn't pitter-patter his feet, stays set, especially when he knows he's gonna get hit and he makes the throws. And that was Brendan Kay just heading back to the locker room. That's what we were talking about. He got beat up a little bit on that last drive, taking two shots, but he was able to find Moore, who has 35 catches on the season. And nine of them are for touchdowns. Yeah, not a bad ratio. <laughs> he's doing all right. They said he's been taking advantage of his opportunities. That certainly would tell you that statistically alone. Miliano set to kick away. We'll see where he goes. Ayers and Payne switch sides right before the kick so they can get the ball in Ayers' hands from the nine-yard line. Good kick coverage by Cincinnati. The ball out at the 27. And this week on NFL Countdown, former New England star Wes Welker sits down with our Patriot, Teddy Bruschi, to discuss his time in New England, his return to Foxborough this weekend, and the differences of playing with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. And of course, before you finalize your roster, flip over to ESPN2. You can join our experts on fantasy football now. Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 on ESPN, fantasy football now at 11 on ESPN2. Well, you know, and Houston had some momentum, Adam. Kind of lost it with Cincinnati going down and scoring there. Minute 23 left. They definitely want to put some points up on the board here. Get some momentum going in the half. O'Corn pressured, and then he threw as a bailout to Farrow, who had coverage. One-on-one -on -one from Temple. And again, that defensive front. You see Silverberry Muhan with the inside move there. All over. John O'Corn, just good pressure by that defensive front for Cincinnati. Second and 10 for the 28. Dropping seven in coverage. O'Corn down the middle, had an open man, but he overthrows Markeith Ambles, former USC wide receiver. And it brings up third down. Yeah, and Ambles is gonna turn open here down the middle of the field because the safety came underneath to get a lower receiver off the screen so there was no safety in the middle of the field. Ambles comes open, but again, that's a product of the rush from the defensive front from Cincinnati. Just making O'Corn hurry up a split second quicker than he wants to. O'Corn, 8 of 22. Here's his 23rd pass of the day on third down. Looking for Greenberry, his safety valve, and Greg Blair with outstanding coverage. And that'll bring up fourth down. That's why he's going to be an NFL linebacker. Again, six foot two, 250 pounds, but yet he can pick up a receiver as good as Deontay Greenberry across the field, make the play, knock that away. Just an excellent job by Greg Blair. Houston is now two of nine on third down. They go three and out for the fourth time today. 
And nobody back really to return here for Cincinnati. Leone's just going to boom it away. Let's see where this ends up dropping. It was grabbed shy of the five-yard line by Alex Tillman. A very solid punt by Leone again. Cincinnati had nobody back yeah, there to return. That was the epitome of punt safe. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even put a receiver. They just left the defense and didn't put anyone back there. That was a 58-yard punt. Now, remember, Brendan Kay yeah. went back to the, seemingly went back to the locker room. He was jogging off the field after Cincinnati's last drive. That was a touchdown drive. He had yeah. taken a couple of shots on that drive. And if he's not back out there, and we didn't really see him come back out, you would think Lou Allen would be out there. Well, and here's the thing, too. With a minute left, not great weather conditions, you're backed up. You've already seen two turnovers from Cincinnati backed up to their own goal line. I don't. I think Tommy Tuberville's happy up 10 at halftime. I think they run this thing here, just try to get out of here, get to the house, up 10. Don't make any mistakes. And, and I, I think he's definitely going to do that. Senior from Greenwood, Indiana, the Georgia Tech transfer. He has tossed the ball nine times, but you wouldn't think he would do it in this situation. They go back to the ground with Abernathy. He works to the 10. Does Houston take a timeout here? Well, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was looking at Tony Levine on the sideline. It does not look like he's going to. Looks like he's going to be content being down 10 at halftime as well. Now, again, that was only the first play. He can still take two timeouts Correct. if they get a stop on the next two plays, but... But with, yeah, 30 we'll seconds, see, yeah. yeah, 30 and counting, I think both these two teams yeah, want to like put it. it in the house. Lou Allen will go into a knee here and take us to the halftime break. The Cincinnati 17, Houston 7. The Bearcats have won five in a row. They still have an outside shot for the BCS here. Tommy Tuberville in his first season at the helm of Cincinnati. They still have a shot at at least a share of the American Conference title as well. Meanwhile, the Cougars trying to battle for a better bowl, perhaps. They're bowl bound as well. A 17-7 lead for the Bearcats. Entertaining first half after a sloppy first quarter. Chris Moore was on display. He had the first score. Greenberry the second. The third touchdown, it was Moore in the corner. 10-point Cincinnati lead at the halftime break. We take you to our studios and ESPN goal line. 